All right, folks, welcome back to the shop. Uh, I'm going to change things up with this design. I want to make a, a reflex uh, mount. Basically, where the, the rifle barrel will go down inside the cap and screw on and then screw on to the tube. Still working with Fusion 360, trying to crank out a drawing, but it's aggravating sometimes. Uh, it's like, well, it is learning another language. I'm getting too old to, to do that, but at any rate. All right, folks, so we're looking at this uh, part in Fusion 360. This is that reflex that I'm working on for a suppressor. Uh, I'm no expert in Fusion 360, but uh, it's coming along. As you can see the, the barrel will slide down, down the tube, thread in the end, 5 8 by 24, and then these threads screw into the suppressor body. Uh, one thing I, I'm seeing after I put it on the, the weapon itself is I probably won't need these holes, which is for a pin wrench, uh, because once it's down on a barrel, uh, you wouldn't be able to get a pin wrench on it. It's going to be under the handguard. So I may machine some flats across here uh, because I've never had a suppressor come loose while I was shooting it. I mean, we check it to make sure it's tight, but sometimes when you're unscrewing it, especially if it's on an AR and it's underneath the handguard, it's more likely to come unscrewed and leave the cap sitting down on your barrel where you can't get to it. So a couple of flats right here. Uh, would enable you to put a wrench on it and take it off. Anyhow, this is my Fusion 360 drawing of the project that's in process. All right, here we go. Uh, you'll see more as I develop it. But basically, it's going to be um, a cylinder with threads down at the bottom and then the end cap. It'll screw on. Okay, here we go. Get started. All right, folks, carrying on with the... Uh, reflex design. Here it is in its roughed in form. Uh, you running into problems of holding the, the device so I can turn it and keep it all concentric. I do have threads cut at the bottom and functionally it's, uh, it actually works pretty good. Screws on. Gives me almost uh, three inches of reflex down the barrel so that way your, your suppressor will actually be shorter. I've got a stamp for a 14 inch suppressor that I've had laying around for a long time. It was going to be a reflex design, but I was struggling with the second contact point on the barrel, trying to figure that out. You know, anytime something touches a barrel that's free floating, it affects the accuracy. And it, it definitely does that. So I was trying to avoid that. So I got to thinking that just a single contact point, I mean, hell, this is 5 eighths by 24. That's pretty pretty hefty threads. It's going to, on the inside there's a, a boss where it mates up to there and keeps it square. So we'll see. Just an experiment. I'm not recommending it. Just something I'm working on. To, this is titanium grade 5. And i got to tell you, it's some hard stuff. It's very tough on the tools. Uh, even my slowed down method of drilling with coolant has been a rocky road to say the least. Uh, it will eat up some bits. Um, I did run across one carbide bit that I had and it drilled right through it like butter. So the key, you can cut on this stuff all day long with carbide inserts, everything works fine. It's a little unforgiving, it's real springy. In other words, if you leave your tool sitting after a cut with the machine running, it's gonna it's gonna want to dive in it for some reason. It's real springy. Uh, so cut it back off, get out of it. Just use good good techniques. Keep your machine rigid. But I tell you what, it's tough. And uh, it just really is. I mean, I've ran across a, quite a few little drops of titanium, and that's really the only reason I'm working in it. I certainly couldn't afford this stuff. I think uh, uh, it's like 175 bucks a foot for a piece, inch and a half grade 5, 12 inches long. But anyhow, here we go. I'm going to uh, use a collet as far as fixturing. 
I'm going to use a collet on the collet chuck and hopefully this thing will run out true enough and I can go ahead and develop the end cap very much like this one. Uh, kind of a low profile cap and I'll blend the rest of this into the, the part of the, uh, the reflex here. Anyhow, that's what I got so far. We'll get you a little video of some turning. Alright folks, so I've got the part here in a 5C collet chuck um, in an expandable collet. Uh, gonna go off on a little rant now. This is one of those inexpensive 5C collet chucks that are uh, uh, adjustable. True adjust or whatever they call it. But anyhow, no matter how I mount this thing up, I've got to dial it in each time. I don't know if that's the way it's supposed to be or not, but also on the uh, the D4, D14 connection in the back, there's always a gap. So I don't know, I'm not very happy with this chuck. I guess the good part of that is you don't have to worry about it being two tenths out. You can dial it in all the way, uh, being adjustable. But somebody tell me if you're supposed to adjust a 5C collet chuck every time, let me know. Anyhow, I'm not going to take very heavy cuts uh, on this, at least until I get it threaded, because I got it dialed in pretty darn good, and then took a skim cut over the entire thing. So, this diameter is down to 1.5. I'm going to come out here and cut uh, 250 thousandths is going to be the cap, and then another uh, 350 thousandths of thread area, and then the rest I'm just going to blend down into the, the body of this. All right, so here we go. take with this 5C collet arrangement. I just don't, I don't trust it. I don't want to knock the part off center when I'm this close to having it done. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring this diameter here down to size and get ready for threading. Uh, I need to bring that down to 1.37. So we'll take some measurements here. Take a look. close to the finished size. Uh, one plus I do notice using this collet chuck is these long stringy chips from the titanium doesn't get slung up around the chuck. So that is an advantage. I'm getting real close to my uh, major diameter here. So. 
couple of checks. It'll be the first time I messed up a part. Got a good bit of time in this one.
threads are starting to develop. Time you stop, you can make a mistake. I was running it forward there and be in reverse. Filming and threading doesn't really work good together. spring passes and we might be there.
a little tight. I think a couple more spring passes. We should have it. What's the matter, boy? Where you at? What you think? Yeah? Alright folks, here's the setup. Got the uh, part in the mill. Got the DRO set up for um, an 8-hole layout. Carbide bit. I'll lay some uh, pin wrench holes around the diameter of this. Here we go.
ないChewing dog. Zeke, what you got? Give me that pack of gum. Give it here. Come here. You better give it. Give it up. Ain't no gum in there. It's just paper. Come on. He's a gum chewing dog now. <laughs> 